Blog Talk Radio. Hi everyone, this is Camille from sunny California, and you're Hi listening to the Coffee Chat Thank with you. Camille show, which is the podcast series that interviews various guests about real life topics for people who love to learn. to find the speaker, actually. I can't hear anything. Um, today, our special guest is John Jarman. He is a US in the U.S. Marine Corps, and he served during Operation Desert Storm and holds a Master's of Science. Um, yeah, one moment. I'm sorry. All right. And he holds a Master's in Science. Uh, Master of Science in Physical Education and Athletic Administration from Ohio University. After coaching and teaching for 17 years, John transitioned to a career in the fitness industry. He started his company, Summit Strength and Conditioning, and was the owner and operator of seven years until the COVID-19 pandemic hit. Now, John is the fitness director of Furcrest Golf Club in Washington State, where he specializes in golf-specific training. He is also continuing in his pursuit of Master Theology at Faith International University and is involved in men's discipleship in his local church in Tacoma, Washington. He is a member of the Club Spa and Fitness Association, Washington Fitness Alliance, and the National Alliance on, on Mental Illness. Um, you can go to his website, and it is brokenandredeemed.com. There you can find um, – oh, I'm sorry. You can find Broken and Redeemed also on Facebook and Instagram. Okay? And now let me make sure I can hear John. Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Hello, John? Hello. Can you hear me? Hello? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Check. Because I can hear you. Let's do this. I can hear you. There we go. Okay. Can you can you hear? Wow. Can you hear me, Camille? No. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I can hear you no, fine. No, no. Oh. Sorry, folks. I'm trying to get us connected here. Uh, we can. I can hear him. And I can briefly, and then it goes out. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, okay, that's correct. Mm-hmm. Let's see. All right, I'm going to... All right, let's try again. Hello? Okay, maybe it's the microphone. One moment of you. Okay, no, nothing. Just kind of going in and out. Hello? Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Hello, John? Yes, I'm speaking right now. I can hear you. I can't figure this one out, folks. So um, let's try this one. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? me Go back. Let's go this way. 
going to go here. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Hello? Hello? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't figure this out. Hello? Hello, I'm here. I can hear you. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think there's a back connection. More likely than not, that's probably exactly what it is. We don't have a good connection. So, because I could hear everything else, I just can't hear my guest. Mm, not good, right? Camille, can you hear me now? And yes. Hello? Hello? Okay, I called in on my... I, 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 I called in on, called my, in on phone. my phone. Okay, hello? But, I, but, I, but, but whatever, whatever I, say, I say, it echoes, it echoes back that. to me. It's like in and out. Yeah. Yeah. Because on the, 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 the computer, I can hear, I can hear you, you, but... Yeah. And I can hear you, um, but it goes in and out. Yeah, and I have, so I have sure. a huge echo on my like side. Oh, no, no, it doesn't. I'm not sure what's, why that's happening. Oh, um, you know what it was? The echo was from the microphone on my computer. Maybe it's here. Is the, com- the computer disconnected thing. now? So, All right. can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Okay. Hello. Hmm. I'm here. No. Hmm. Um. Hello? Hello? Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yay, I finally. You. I'm so sorry. Can you or not? That's okay. No, no, I can hear you fine. Oh, wonderful. Yes, I'm so sorry. Can you hear, can you hear me now? I can. No, don't yes, apologize. It was... Okay, good. Okay. I just, I called, <laughs> I called in on my phone when you were having all that trouble, so... Yeah, it was weird. Like, I could hear you for a minute, and then you would disappear. So, at any rate, I want to go ahead and start the uh, interview, and then I'll just edit out what, you know, the technical stuff. Um, Right. So, okay, so we're going to go ahead and start. Although you talked about it in a book, what truly prompted you to write this book? And what was the deciding factor that made you say, I'm going to do this? Well, it was my counselor of 10 years suggested I write a book, and um, that that was back in 2014, and when she said that, I kind of laughed at her because, you know, my story's not, it's my story, but there's other people who've been down far worse stories or have, you know, harder paths than I have, and some have been down similar, and, and so, you know, I started thinking about it and shared it with a few friends, and shared some of my story and they said, yeah, John, you need to write a book. And so I'm sitting there thinking, okay, I'm a, I'm a Marine. Um, I failed English in high school and I have dyslexia. How am I going to write a book? (laughs) And so um, I sought help from a young lady at my church who was, who was a writer and she kind of helped me guide the, you know, outline the book and help me start formulating it. Um, But it wasn't until um, 2019 when I finished the book, um, it sat kind of on the shelf. And, and then one day, um, in my prayer and reading time, um, the Holy spirit prompted me to finish the book and I started writing in it and finished it in four weeks and then submitted oh. it to a publisher, um, who worked with my editor. Um, and then she told me she was a scout for Morgan James publishing. And then in September of 2019, I was pu- accepted into their family mm-hmm. And then um, in August of last year, um, I received my first copy of the book, and it hit bookstores in August. So that's how the book came about. Okay, wonderful. And then what was one of the most difficult subjects to write about during your book writing journey? 
Um, it would have been the, you know, the mistakes and the transition transgressions that I made, you know, because, you know, in the process of the book, I wanted to talk about some of the bad decisions I made and some of the people that I'm, that I heard along my path, but I didn't want to reopen wounds. Um, if those people were to read the book, you know, and so that was the toughest part of, of, of how to figure out how to put that down on paper without, um, the possibility of opening any wounds. So that was the toughest part. Okay. And then what was your least favorite part of the book? Oh, I would, uh, you know, that the least favorite part of the book would have to be just what I said is the, is the, you know, looking back and writing about the mistakes I made and, and, you know, the, the people that I heard along my, uh, along my journey to, to, you know, giving up control and, and to be, you know, walking a better path with, with Christ, you know, that was the, that was the toughest and the least favorite part of the book because that self-examination is tough. So, yes. And then um, can someone think that they're basically a good person and only somewhat and only somewhat broken but still need redemption? Um, yeah, I think because, I mean, we're all we're all broken because of what happened in the garden. Um, and, and I think that um, we all need that and we all need to to strive for that redemption. And that's the, that's the gospel is, is, you know, that's the reason why Jesus came to earth is to redeem everyone. Um, and you know, it's, it's, it says in the Bible, if we think we're, we're without sin, then we're lying to ourselves. So. And then, um, or is it only needed by some people that are truly broken before redemption is really necessary? Um, I would say that the redemption, you know, you, uh, I tell you what, re- repeat that question for me. <laughs> okay. Uh, or is it only needed by those people that are truly broken before redemption is really necessary? Well, no, I think it's, I think it's needed. Like I said, it's redemption's needed for everyone. Um, and not only the broken and, and the, the sad part of it is that some of the broken people feel that they have to get fixed before they come to Christ. And that's not the case. They need to, you know, come to Christ and he will fix you. Um, is, is what I tell people is, is, you know, you, it, people that, you know, you can't, if you're sick, you go to the doctor, you don't get, you don't wait till you feel better to go to the doctor. So. Okay. And then to those people that were affected by your past actions and say, if what he says is true, why didn't he think about how his actions affected others then instead of 15 to 20 years later? Well, that's a good question. It's been asked before. And, and, and the thing is, is, is I'm not the same person that I was then. Um, I didn't have the thought pattern that I do now. Um, and and that that is simply because of my journey um and my faith walk with christ is in and i wasn't thinking the way i did because of my past and um i was very selfish and and had a huge ego and that's that was my only response that i can give and and you know ask for forgiveness because of that because that is that is the reason why is because my i was not thinking the way i do now Hmm. Yes, and then what would you say to those that question your faith in Christ's power to overcome and heal because you advocate for and use counseling to deal with your past and not just give it all to God? Well, I think, I mean, I think that Christ places people in your life and he uses those people to help you through things. Um, You know, I had a spiritual mentor as well. Um, and you know, he, Scotty helped me just as much as Christine did. And I think that those two people were placed in my life, um, for that specific reason, um, to help me walk down that path that I needed to go down to, to come to where I'm at. Um, and so I would say that, you know, and I advocate counseling to anybody, um, if it's a faith-based counselor, even better. Um, but I think you need to find somebody who you can talk to and, and that can help you through things. So, it, and we're not supposed to be on this journey by ourselves. And mm-hmm. and that's what I would say to them. Wonderful. And then how did you find freedom? Well, the freedom came just because of the surrender, um, because my life was in such a 
storm and a and a whirlwind at that time and when I fell down on my knees that morning in 2016 and, and just said, look, I can't do this. And cause I was a control freak growing up and I tried to control every aspect of my life. And, and that was what I held on to and clinged on to for, for years and years. And when I finally gave that up, um, that's when I really truly saw the freedom. Um, the freedom also came from with working with Christine um, and, and the work we did there uh, because one day I walked out of her office and it felt like the weight of the world was lifted off my shoulders. And so, you know, that combination is what gave me the freedom. And it's just, it's been a blessing ever since. Okay. Thank you so much. And then what is the most important, I'm sorry, what is the most important except in developing a true relationship with God? Um, I think it's the self-examination you have to do when you start to, to you know, get into the Word and you start having a daily prayer and, and reading. It's it's looking at yourself and seeing what you need to change and what you need to ask God to change in you. Um, and that's that I call that the messy part of Christianity because it forces you to truly look inside yourself and, and see what areas of your life that, that need to be changed. Um, and... That is that is the toughest part, I think. Yes. And then uh, our last question is, how important is forgiveness in your walk with God? Um, it's it's super important to me because I think you have to learn how to forgive yourself first um, and before you seek forgiveness from others. Um, because if you can't forgive yourself for, for, for something, then, you know, it's tough to ask for or give forgiveness to someone else. And so um, I think that you have to understand that that's that forgiveness first before you can move on. Okay. And so that actually um, ends uh, our interview and questions. And I just really want to thank you so very much. I uh, read your reviews and it was a, uh, Lessons and loss. I think it's called qualified. And at any rate, um, they have wrote that you are an incredible storyteller, and that you were just a wonderful guest. And I absolutely agree. And I um, want to thank you so much for your patience with us here. No, no, no problem. And hey, can I just add one little? Did if yes. you, if you have room to put this in the interview? So my favorite part of the book. Because you asked me what was the hardest part of the book. My favorite part of the book is meeting Bart Millard, the lead singer. So the favorite part of the book is meeting Bart Millard, the lead singer of Mercy Me, and getting permission (laughs) from him to use the title of his song, Dear Younger Me, for the last chapter of my book. And that was was just an amazing day when when that took place. And um, I got to sit down with Bart, and we shared our stories and testimonies, and it was just an amazing day. So. Okay, thank you so much. I love that. Yeah. And then, oh, Les, yeah. I'm sorry. And then also, um, where mm-hmm. can our audience find you and uh, and also your book? Well, my book can be found on at brokenandredeemed.com, but then they can learn more about the story. Um, it can it's actually available anywhere books are sold right now on eBooks or any bookstore. Um, the Audible mm-hmm. is due out sometime this year. Um, but they can go anywhere to find the book. And then I do have a Broken and Redeemed Facebook page and on Instagram. Okay. Thank you so, so very much again, John. I appreciate you. And um, bye for now. All righty. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. To you too. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't say you too. I hit the button too quick. But um, that was a wonderful John Jarman. I did want to finish reading because I have some time. I have about 10 minutes. So I did want to finish reading um, John's bio. Okay. Because I don't think I finished it. Uh, oh, yes, I did. Oh, okay. Everything is great. Um, the message that one of the messages that I took away from one of his answers, I think it was the, the second to last one, is to for, or the last one, forgive yourself first. Okay, you want to open up your relationship and have a full relationship with God. You have to open up yourself and let go of your ego. He talked about how his ego was. Now he had to control. He was uh, into controlling everything. 
and uh, just surrendered. And so the actual title is What is Surrender with John Jarman? Okay, so I hope that you, my wonderful um, audience out there, those of you that are Christians, who are disciples, who are missionaries, um, who have a deep faith in God, uh, that's one of the greatest relationships that you can ever have in your life, other than with your family members, is that relationship with God. And it takes a lot of work and a lot of maturing. Um, that's what he was, um, John was explaining, you know, it's not, Hey, he's like, I'm not the same person I was before. And, um, you become better and better for making a change within yourself and then let God guide you to what your actual real path is to be here on earth. And so I believe in God. I believe in quite a bit, but I definitely believe in God. And I want to say my mom and my sister are about to go over to Israel to visit. They're going to take a somewhat of a pilgrimage um, and kind of uh, just walk with Jesus, if I can say that. So, again, you can find John's, uh, I think, about him and his book on Broken and Redeem.com. And I don't know if you guys can hear us. We had a little rough start. Um, my sound, sometimes, it, I think it's just either sound or connection. And once in a while, it just happens. And I just try to work through it as best as I can. I'm not really the tech person. I have someone who helps me. But they weren't able to be here. They had to work. So I do apologize if you hear the opening. But I'm probably going to just um, take that part out. But I really enjoy listening to John and his message is powerful and um, all faith-based messages that are about bettering ourselves and you know just um, growing our relationship with God is a worldwide message because we have so many believers all over the earth and we have to remember that when we are in our own belief system that there's so many believers you know and very good people doing magnificent things, and it's beautiful to connect with them and to speak with them and to listen to their journey and learn. And so um, I just want to thank John one more time, and uh, thank you thank you all for listening to us. To us. <laughs> I broadcast out of California in the United States, and I think I, I didn't do my shout-out to Portugal, but hello, to all you Portugal listeners, I appreciate you um, tuning in uh, to my podcast. Or And also, um, all the other countries, there's so many at this point. So I'll do a, a separate episode. But again, please check out John's website, Broken and Redeemed, with E-D at the end, dot com. You can find him on Facebook and Instagram. All right. And then also we're going to have this episode. It's probably going to uh, be on my, what do you call it? Uh, on our website, coffeechatwithcamille.com. If you go there, you'll be able to find, I think this is our season six right now. So you'll be able to find this particular episode. And anytime you hear me um, mention that our guest has a website, and you, you don't have time to jot it down real quick or something, just go to coffeechatwithcamille.com and look for them on my site, and you'll be able to find our guest, okay? We need to really support our writers and people who are out here sharing. There's nothing more beautiful than us sharing our stories with one another. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to say goodbye for now because I only have five minutes. <laughs> so I would say I would say bye. Thank you again. Thank you, our wonderful, magnificent guest, John. He's a, a wonderful person. And goodbye for now. <laughs>